This is video journal 3A5BF0556FED. My name is Eric, and today I'd like to show you guys the blockchain I've been working on. It's a bit different from your typical blockchain, so it will help if we do a quick review to show how a basic blockchain works, so that we're on the same page in seeing how this project is different. So of course we're going to start with a block, and a block is a container for data. If we look at the Bitcoin network as an example, this data would be Bitcoin transactions. And the job of mining a block is a task of generating the correct headers for this data. And again, in the case of Bitcoin, whoever manages to do so is rewarded with a cryptocurrency that they can then spend on the network. But cryptocurrencies are specific to blockchain networks and are not necessarily a part of every blockchain. So how do we create the correct headers for this data? Well, if we want to create a new block, we're going to start with some data that we want to add to the chain. And the first header we're going to add is the hash of the previous block. If you're not familiar with hashes, they are algorithms that take some arbitrary data as an input and will output a really big number that can be used essentially as a fingerprint for that data. If we change the input data in any way, the resulting number or hash will be totally different and we can see that the change has occurred. So we are going to store that fingerprint or hash of the previous block as a header field in the new block. And this will be done for every subsequent block in the chain, storing the previous block's hash in its headers. Now these hashes are going to do two things for us. First of all, they're going to link our blocks. This creates a linear one-to-one -one parent child relationship where each block has one parent and one child. Additionally, these hashes add the security to our blockchain. How do they do this? Well, remember a hashing algorithm is going to output a really large number in the SHA-512 algorithm. For example, this is going to output a number between zero and 2 to the 512th power. Now in our blockchain network, we can set a threshold for our hashes in order for them to be valid. Say their value must be below 2 to the 500th, just as an example. Now, given the data that we have put in this block, and given the previous hash as a header, as it stands, the hash of this new block is almost certainly not going to fall within this difficulty requirement. So we need a way to change the hash of our block. And we can do this by adding a new field to the headers called the nuts. This is an arbitrary field that we can increment and change, and we can just try out different values in that field until we find a hash that satisfies our difficulty requirement. This is called a proof of work style blockchain, and it requires a computer to actually guess and check different values and compute a valid hash. Now, this makes the blockchain secure for two reasons. First of all, remember that the hash is a fingerprint for the data. And we store the fingerprint of this block as a field in this block. So this fingerprint becomes a part of this fingerprint. And so too with the subsequent block. So if we were to change the data of this block, it would change the hash of this block, which would change the hash of this block, which would change the hash of every subsequent block in the chain. So in order for this new edited fake data to be valid, we would have to recompute the proof of work algorithm for every single subsequent block in the chain. And this is computationally impractical, so our data becomes much more secure by putting it into a blockchain. So that is the model of your standard proof of work blockchain. So how does this project differ? Well, of course, we are still going to start with a block and this is still a container for data with headers. However, instead of only storing one type of data, say transactions, this block can store anything. This can be transactions, or it can be plain text, or it can be a binary file, such as this video. Additionally, instead of having a linear one-to-one -one parent-child relationship, this blockchain has a one-to-many parent-child relationship. So each block will have one parent, but may have many children.
This allows us to add a third functionality to our hash, and that is relational data. So in this blockchain, the parent and child relationship is only chronology. The parent here is the parent because it was created last and the child was created next. Whereas here, we can choose the parent block based on the relevance of their contained data. So this parent is the parent because its data is pertinent to our new data. In practice, we may have an origin block here and then say, I take this video and mine a block with it as its data. And then all of you lovely viewers could mine blocks of your own in the form of comments to the video. And so too with replies, etc., etc. Later, we could take a different video and it could spawn threads of its own. And by choosing the previous hash based on the relevance of the data, it self-organizes into this sort of tree of a blockchain. My intentions for this blockchain, however, are not for individual pieces of data, at least at this first layer. So the plan is to make this sort of an application block. So this would represent an application. And then any data relevant to that application could be children of that application block. Let's look at an example of a social media platform. So in a traditional architecture, we may have a web server and a database. And our client wanting to make a post will type into a text box that text will be sent to the web server, which can then be entered into the database. And then upon the request of the client, it can be retrieved and returned. So that's our traditional model. But if we wanted to do this with a blockchain, we would still have our web server and we would still have our database. And our client would have virtually the same user experience. They could type their post into a text box. However, instead of just sending this plain text to the web server, they will locally on their machine mine this into a block. The output of this will be a file that they can store locally and can share with whomever they like. One of the people with whom they might like to share it is the application to which it is relevant. That application should have a block server that will be tailored to look for blocks relevant to this application. So the client will send the block here. This block server can validate the data, the headers in any way it likes, but one of the ways in which it would probably like to do so is to follow the chain back to the application block to see that indeed this block is relevant to the application. So it can store it locally, add data about it to a database, and then upon the request of the client, retrieve it and return it. So what is the status of this project? Well, if you would like to look at the source code for it, that is available at git.eom.dev slash blockchain. And there you will find that most of the core functionality for creating and sharing blocks over a network is already ready. I have some more work to do implementing a client and server implementation of all of this. And once all of that is done, I would like to test this out in my own network and put it through its paces. So if you're interested in keeping up with that and seeing the progress, uh, feel free to follow me at eom.dev, <laughs> this one right here. Other than that, please leave any questions you have for me or even code reviews are much appreciated. Other than that, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Doodles.